three, two, one. Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are back on the path to the Richelieu. And that can only mean one thing. We're at tier six, which means we are in the Lyon. Now I'm not gonna lie. Uh, we're gonna have a bit of a longer episode here because I've got a few games that I want to show. Maybe at least two. At least two. I've got several uh, that I had today that I could probably post, but we're only gonna choose two of them. Uh, anyway, with that being said, let's get to our commander. We are running Robert Jajard, and we're running Azure Lane, Sharnhorst, and Palo de Revel as our inspirations. We have Flammable Cannoneer, Gyrating Drill Bits, Megalomania, uh, reaching out XXL and of course will to rebuild Going to the equipment. We are running aiming systems mod 1 Steering gears mod 2 and target acquisition mod Okay Moving on to the loadout we as you can see still don't get any planes We do get the uh, enhanced secondaries, which is nice we have Community Contributor Flag, and we are running the Revolutionary Camo. Survivability. 50,730 with a 16% torpedo damage reduction. Main batteries, you have 340mm 45 caliber 1912, so you have 16 of those in a 4x4 configuration. 179 kilometer range with a 25.4 second reload time. 36 seconds, 180 degree turn time. HE shell maximum damage is 4,700 with a 26% chance to set fires. And AP shell maximum damage of 10,450. Secondaries, you have 130 millimeter 45 caliber 1932s that you have eight of that reach out to 5.2 and reload in five seconds. Then you have, they uh, do 1900 damage per second, or damage per second. They do 1900 damage maximum with HE and have a 9% chance to set fires. And then you have the quad turret 130 millimeter 45 calibers that uh, reach out 5.2, reload in just five seconds, and have a maximum damage of 1900 with a 9% chance to set fires. For AA, the AA isn't bad. Uh, it's actually decent 20 millimeter 70 caliber mark fours you have 14 of those doing 50 damage per second reaching out to two kilometers then you have the 20 millimeter 70 caliber mark 20s that you have 16 of that do 49 damage per second and reach out to two kilometers that's odd so you have more guns available but they are less effective overall than the previous iterations of the gun a mark four would be way before a mark 20 so how did the Mark 20s end up so bad compared to, like, interesting. 40 millimeter 56 caliber Bofors Mark 3s. You have 16 of those that do 122 damage per second and reach out to 3.5 kilometers. And then you have the 40 millimeter 56 caliber Bofors Mark 2s that you have 16 of. They are quad, quad guns and uh, they do 64 damage per second, reach out to three and a half kilometers. Maneuverability, 24.3 knots, so a little bit slower than the uh, Normandy. Turning circle, a uh, little bit worse than the Normandy, but still pretty good, 700 meters is really good. Rudder shift time of just 11.3 seconds with this build. Battleship, detectability by range, I don't know why I said battleship. Detectability by sea is 14 kilometers. Detectability by air is 11.7. Two is your guaranteed as always. And detectability while firing in smoke is 12.2. Let's check out the armor. It's not bad, but it is a little squishy up top. Not gonna lie. So uh, yeah, let's take a look at it. It does also have the belt that goes all the way up to the bow, which is nice. We've already talked about this multiple times, so we don't need to reiterate, but 140 millimeters on the bottom section, 180 millimeters at the waterline. So pretty, pretty solid. Uh, then of course you have your 25 millimeter bow that is the upper, upper plating. So anybody with 15 inch guns or larger can go straight through that part of the ship and do damage while you're bow tanking. Keep that in mind. Now, 
But that being said, you you do have some pretty good side plating here. You got 30 millimeter torpedo bulge. Then if you take that off, you also have the uh, 180 millimeters on the side of the ship, or 300 millimeters on the side at the belt. So you have 30 millimeters plus 300. So you're, you're gonna be pretty solid unless you go flat broadside. As long as you're angled, you're gonna be okay. So just make sure you're angling. Get rid of all of that and get into the Citadel itself. From uh, ahead of the front gun quite a bit, all the way to the rear guns. And it's submerged for the most part. Like, it's right at the waterline, if anything. But yeah, uh, quite a huge, lightly armored Citadel. So if rounds do get through, there, there's a good chance, especially from range with plunging fire, that they're gonna punch your Citadel. So, let's look at the overview. Guns are plenty. A high number of guns allows for a lot of damage from a single salvo, and that does, that is a fact. 16 guns, pretty nasty. And they're not the smallest guns either. They're 340 millimeters, so that'd be, what, a 14-inch gun? Pretty close. Maybe a 13-inch gun. Uh, sure shot. Shells with good ballistic trajectory maintain velocity, making aiming easier. Uh, yes, at closer ranges, yes, but at further ranges, you, you get the, uh, the looping effect. Modest guns. The ship is armed with low caliber main battery guns. Also true, but again, people underestimate the Leon so much. And, uh, it can absolutely punch people hard. So, uh, you, you'll see. Leon, a battleship design created before the outbreak of World War I representing an improvement on the previous Normandy class, but carrying enhanced prim primary armament. The addition of the fourth main gun turret allowed the ship to deliver a unique 16-gun broadside salvo. She was designed in 1913, but never built. So let's take a look at her. Sporting that red, white, and blue for the, uh, the French flag there. She's a, she's a good looking ship. And definitely a unique profile shot from the side with four quadruple turrets. Like, that's pretty, pretty insane. But with that being said, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so we're going to be on Trident and we're in the Leon. Now, like I said, we've got a couple videos I want to showcase just because um, the Leon is a fun ship. A lot of people like the Leon. A lot of people think it's a fun meme ship, but it's, it's a serious ship. Like, it's not just about the memes. This ship is a doozy. Um, now, a lot of people give it a grief because its dispersion's not always amazing. It's got 16 guns. You don't need amazing dispersion all the time. But trust me, it gets plenty amazing dispersion. <laughs> For it, plenty. Plenty. You know how many salvos that I've hit in this thing? 13 to 17,000 damage without citadels? Like, trust me, it gets... Plenty of good dispersion. But uh, today, I've been playing for a few hours in the Leon, actually, believe it or not. And uh, I was just trying to get a, a specific type of game. And then I run into some delightful fellas uh, in this match on my own team that had mics. And it was actually quite good. It was actually quite good. And by quite good, I mean they were literally the epitome of, uh, you know, those online gaming community guys you know what i'm saying like i get salty that's one thing but generally speaking if i get salty and, and say stuff or whatever it's usually directed at in general but yeah these are those guys that like to uh you know just they're they're like 12 year old jokes like they, they've got nothing fresh they they're all like the uh, you know the stereotypical online competitive gamer like it just that's just the kind of person they are if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. If not, don't worry about it. But uh, we start out with a 13,000 uh, damage salvo against King George at 16 kilometers. Like, not too bad. Uh, now, I realize that I'm in a tier 7 match. We've got a Georgie out here just begging for it too, so we're going to reach out and touch him. He's given us too much of an angle. We aim high because we got smaller guns. We don't want to be hitting the belt armor of everybody. But, uh, yeah, I mean, do, do you really need any more? Two salvos, 30,000 damage. Just right there. Now, obviously, we've got a Kuchizov, we've got a Hipper, we've got the Georgia, we've got a King George, all getting ready to start shooting me. 
And it, it's somewhere in this neighborhood when I start getting HE spam by everybody that I say something along the lines of, hey, uh, anybody want to get some shots on these guys so that uh, they have somebody other than me to shoot at? And these gentlemen start saying stuff in chat and it just, you know, it's it's funny. Like, I wasn't even mad. I was just saying, hey, uh, you know, if somebody could shoot at something, get somebody's attention so that they're not all focused on me, I'd appreciate it. And so they called me a noob, they called me all the things, and, and then I just shut up in chat and played the game, right? And uh, it's at that moment, like, if, if you get me in a game and you say something like, uh, in a, in a way that you're trying to disrespect me, I'm going to try my darndest to get this as a video so that I can make you look silly. Okay? I don't care about their names. I'm not naming and shaming or anything like that. All I'm doing is coming in here and showing up everybody in a tier 6 battleship in a tier 7 uh, match. In a ship that people call a meme ship. But uh, we take a shot at the Fiji and uh, wait for it. Mm, yep, there you go. First citadel of the game. 47,000 damage already. We managed to break contact with all the HE spammers, you know, just give ourselves a little breathing room. Get our damage controls back around. We're about to lose a fire anyway, so it's not that big a deal. We've still got two more heals. It's not the end of the day. This is why I say fire spamming is kind of, uh, you know, uh, an... It's an issue, but it's not an issue, because once you get used to what you have to do against fire spammers, it's really not that bad. Like, yeah, it sucks to get fire spammed, especially on maps like Atlanta or, or Atlantic or, or some of those other maps that are wide open, because you got nowhere you can go. Like, on maps like this, you can, you can break contact, you can get out of fire for a little while, get some health back, and then usually by then, the fire starters have broken up a little bit, kind of split up. And that allows you to re-engage much more aggressively and uh, either close the distance and take them out or get a chance to uh, just take them out in general. Or at least only have one of them shooting at you. Uh, but yeah, so our team is clumped up pushing on this left side. I've taken a pretty standard position from the center, uh, taking some crossfires at people. Uh, keeping them away from the team for the majority and again keeping people from getting shot is a big deal Notice that when I'm not getting shot at like right now people on my team start dying. We've already lost two destroyers uh, We're gonna lose a cruiser in a moment um, I'm not hundred percent sure if this cruiser was one that actually ends up uh, Was one of the ones that was talking about me, but I can't remember that all I know is it was hilarious uh, the Kutch's off here. I'm not gonna lie. I booger this first shot so badly like this first shot I should have deleted him the moment he come around the corner, but watch how badly I booger this shot. Just watch. It's hilarious. Wait for it and Shoot. Oh, he's turning away too late Too late you boogered it. It's all right We're about to have the front guns around and then we'll be able to deal with them right Right? I mean, it's a Kutchazov, it's Russian cruiser, and I've got a battleship guns, and he's angled. This should be beautiful. Uh, then we get the dispersion of nightmares, and we only get three hits, but they were all overpins. And now he's trying to smoke up. The good news is we still have our back guns loaded. Because of our speedy reload build, this thing seems to always be loaded. Especially if you get into these, uh, what do they call that, ripple fires? Uh, it's not truly a ripple fire, it's more of a half salvo. You've got the two guns at the back fire, two guns at the front fire. Uh, it, you can really, really make it seem like you always got a gun loaded. Uh, if you do a true ripple fire, you probably can too, though that dispersion usually ends up just making you cry um, when you ripple fire. But you can see the Kuchizov coming out trying to do his thing. Um, we get another good shot here at the King George. I'm not going to lie, I was a little disappointed in that salvo. Uh, shattering three rounds off of a King George, but uh, he, he did angle in slightly so maybe we hit the belt hard to tell But uh, you can see I'm gonna take a shot here with all four guns just to make sure that he dies and uh, Unfortunately, he takes a torpedo right at the last second So our uh, divine vengeance was stolen from us Now obviously our team on the left side has somewhat crumbled a little bit. There is a cruiser still there. There's the uh, uh, Vladivostok over there, but uh, the one cruiser went out died and uh, They still have two destroyers left Now this shot on this King George 
Again, just absolutely beautiful dispersion, mostly horizontal, I believe. Uh, so if we look, yeah, you can see a lot of horizontal dispersion and we just absolutely pound them, getting over 7,000 damage in that one. And then somebody else also follows it up with a nice shot. Now, you might be looking at the map and paying attention that there's a crew, there's a destroyer right next to me. It's Kotsky. So we, we got to watch out there. We've got a George out here on my right, though. And on the map, he's he is flat broadside to me right now. So I'm going to try to take advantage of that. And it's like he knows. It's like he's like, oh, God, Spartan's probably looking at me through that island right now. Got to turn away. And he does. He turns away. And that's going to just absolutely break my heart. Because I thought I was going to be able to get a good hit on him. And unfortunately, not the case. Now, that being said, uh, we still have, you know, quite a, a fight on our hands here. It's pretty well knotted up. The teams are very, very similar. They've lost three. We've lost four. So we're technically down a ship. But uh, Fiji is destined to make that not a thing. And uh, wait for it. Nighty night, sunshine. Go back to port. Pow! Down he goes. And uh, yeah, you know, it was it was funny that, you know, the ship sin seems, to, me and the Leon seem to get along. I don't know if you guys have ever seen me do like the triple Leon divisions with Mike or, or uh, Peak or anybody. Uh, but we've had a lot of fun in the Leon. And it's just, it's a fun ship, man. Look at that. Who can't love that? Like, who doesn't want to do that to people? And, uh, look at that. Look at that. That's 13,000 damage on a tier 7 battleship and taking zero in return. He was angled. It wasn't even like he was giving me a flat broadside. That was shooting at a superstructure with 16 rounds. Now, you can see I'm checking the HP of the battleship that's behind me because he's been in reverse for the entire game. Not calling him out. Just saying, you know. I'm, a, I'm here now. Between the two of us, we can we can do this. Uh, now, it's around this time that the Akatsuki decides that he wants to commit suicide. And so he gets himself spotted, and I'm going to swing my ship around and the guns and try to get the guns on target. Now, watch him. He, may, he, he throws his hand right here. He's trying to avoid the island. He's coming to the inside. We're going to take that shot, even though he disappears. 16 rounds in the air. You're going to probably hit something. And we get four hits and our high caliber on that and leave him with nothing. The man has no health left. But you don't need health in a Japanese destroyer when you have concealment that is just absolutely insane. Unless, of course, you do something incredibly dumb, like fire your guns at a battleship who has half his hit points and is loaded. Goodbye, sunshine. Go back to port. All right. And that just leaves the Georgia out here for me to deal with. And of course, on his dying breath, they give this man a freaking fire. His dying breath. They give him a fire. Never fails. But, Georgia here is about to learn a lesson. A, he needs to aim for the center of my ship and not the front. Because he's just going to overpin the bow of my ship. He needs to hit the center. Uh, and B, he's got a huge superstructure that I'm going to take advantage of. American battleships and German battleships have this nasty, uh, you know, affinity for having superstructure just absolutely get wrecked. Now, he does get a good shot there, gets one full penetration for 5,000 damage, and uh, we're going to just, you know, touch him back for him. And we just smash him 6,500 through the superstructure again. And it was this shot that I thought he's dead. But somehow the Nelson completely whiffs. Nelson is like nine kilometers from this man and just missed completely. And uh, unfortunately, he gets a couple penetrations this time and manages to finish me off. But uh, we did pretty well in this one. And uh, it was it was a fun match. Even even more fun about it was I get it. I was cocky as hell at the end of this match. I'm not going to lie. Pardon my language. Hell, not that bad of a word, but still. Uh, <laughs> finally, Nelson makes up for it, realizes the guy's in reverse and finishes him off but uh yeah anyway we managed to get into the base here we did everything in our power to win this game for our team and uh this guy in the in the suja was was still talking and so i get into chat just to irk him and i'm one of those guys like if you start making fun of me i'll just make jokes about it until you get like frustrated and that's kind of what i did to him <laughs> it was hilarious like he's just sitting there just 
uh, mom joke after mom joke, went as far as going all the way back to having a time machine and, and messing with my great-great-grandmother, apparently. So, like, I was just, I was going in chat. It was hilarious. Uh, and anyway, I said, man, you know, every superhero needs an origin story. So I appreciate this enlightening conversation. And he's like, you ain't no superhero. You're, you're just dumb. You're a noob. I'm like, I'm a noob. Well, let's, let's see how, how we stack up in the leaderboards at the end of this fight. Because I knew I'd be top. Like, I'm a, I'm a low tier, or I'm a up tiered battleship. So I'm literally a bottom tier battleship in this fight. As long as I'm not a complete idiot, I can get top of the leaderboard. Because you get an XP bonus when you're a bottom tier chip. Which is why I don't really mind going bottom tier. Everybody always says, oh, I hate being bottom tier. I hate being bottom tier all the time. It's really good for you, especially if you're grinding the line. I mean, it teaches you a lot of things. You can't you can't just throw your ship out there and let people, you know, pick on it. But that's the thing. Like, this game is all about adapting. It really is. Every game is slightly different. People are not. People make the dumbest plays on the planet. And then occasionally you run into a good player. Okay, that's just how that works. Like, most players that you run into are very, very similar. They don't really know what they're doing. And they will make all of the mistakes and allow you to capitalize on it. It's up to you to make sure you are putting yourself in position to take advantage of that. And so, uh, while these guys finish capping the base and their last cruiser runs off to Estuary uh, for the next match, then, uh, you know, we're just going to sit here and talk for a moment. There you go. Base capped. And surprise, surprise, surprise to nobody. We're top of the leaderboard. Who to thunk it? 2300 base XP. Absolutely crushing them. The Suja that was talking all the crap halfway down the leaderboard. Big surprise. 110,000 damage, high caliber, two citadels, two kills. Went toe to toe with, uh, you know, pretty much everybody in that one. But uh, in this one, I wanted to showcase this because it's my favorite map. And because, once again, we are bottom tier. And once again, we're going to have to show that we know what we are doing to uh, help carry this team to a victory, uh, in theory. So, with that being said, Estuary is my favorite map. A lot of people say that I'm crazy for that, but honestly, I love this map. There's a lot of action on this map and a lot of interesting crossfires that normal people do not take advantage of. There are windows to squeeze shells everywhere to catch people who are paying attention to the people directly across from them rather than the people that are shooting across the map. And it makes for some juicy salvos, guys. I love it. I love this map. It also allows me, as an aggressive battleship captain, a lot of room to maneuver and get close without people uh, being able to stop it. Um, now, in the Leon, Leon not necessarily known for being a brawler, but I'll tell you what, this thing, if you get close, this thing will murder your face. Okay, if you give this thing a broadside, you're talking twenty to thirty thousand damage, and that's if he doesn't citadel you. Like this thing is disgusting when it decides to get a broadside at close range. Okay, it it really is. Now I was hoping to get a shot at somebody early, but I don't like to sit here because there tends to be people that spawn directly across from you, and those planes that spotted me would get me uh, in trouble by the the Richelieu and the Poltava. Now, obviously, the Richelieu is next on our schedule, right? So, we're going to get to see a Richelieu versus Leon fight, right? Nah, maybe not. Uh, I like to come to the mid. I like to push up, stop anybody's early push into our base, because it happens mm, so often. So often that people just, like, push straight in towards this base. I don't know what it is, but it just happens a lot. So I come over here to help with that. We take three torpedoes, and I'm not going to lie, I was pretty salty about that one. But uh, we do shoot down five of the, or six of the planes that came up against us. So we can't really argue there. Like I said, AA on this thing, not that bad. But uh, you can see the ZF-6 here is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with our Roma and gets a couple torpedoes on him. But to the Roma's credit, he doesn't die right away. And so we're going to get a shot at the ZF-6. And the ZF-6 has royally screwed himself. There, there's no way out of this. And that dispersion is enough to make you cry. Now, he does stop and start to change direction, which keeps him from getting hit even harder. 
But that was definitely not the dispersion I was hoping for. But it was enough. We take enough off of him, and Roma gets a detonation on the ZF6. Because, of course, he does. But unfortunately for the Roma, there's a shard horse right around the corner, and that's not going to go well for it. But we take a shot at the shard horse, aiming over the back of the, the Roma, and we get a decent hit, but not a lot of good, good hits. Uh, four penetrations. Not what I was looking for. I think the Roma kind of ate a couple of our shells there, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, we've got the Poltava shooting at us. We've got a Sharnhorst pushing up. Now, Sharnhorst is a pretty predictable ship, okay? It's got mediocre guns. They're, they're really small guns, but they are decent for their size. Uh, but it's a torp boat. Everybody knows it, and everybody wants to try to torp with it. So it's very easy to deal with. All you got to do is kite away and then just rip it apart with a battleship. Like, that's all you do. Uh, you've got secondaries, he's got secondaries. Your guns are going to do more damage than him. That's all that matters. His torpedoes, as you can see, are, are useless. We have all day to dodge them. And you can see I'm shooting high. I'm trying to shoot into the superstructure or the guns, try to knock out guns temporarily. And you can see I accidentally switched targets to the Poltava, trying to get shots on this guy. Uh, we get shot by the uh, Richelieu over there but you can see a much better salvo this time. And he's also going to take some torpedoes because, you know, while you're trying to kill me, I still have teammates out here. You may not know they exist, but that doesn't mean that it's any less dangerous. And so we've got the fire. We actually end up with a second fire here just as we're about to take the shot and somebody manages to kill him with their guns. It was the Jervis. And I'm not going to lie, it's a little salty there. I was like, come on, man. All that damage I did to him. Now, he did twerp him a couple times, so I guess it's it's up for grabs who did more damage. So, kills whoever. It doesn't matter. He's dead. That's what matters. But, uh, Ganai's no out here. We're going to take a beautiful shot at him, and look at this dispersion, dude. Seriously. Boom! 10,800 damage. Just absolutely rocking him. From long range. Well, I guess this would be... Eh, it's still long range. It's long range. 13k... I'd say anything 13K and above is long range. Anything below 12K is probably uh, medium range. And then anything inside uh, 8K is probably going to be your uh, short range. But we take a second shot at the Gneisenau. And once again, we get a solid hit. 4,000 damage off of him. But uh, we're not going to be able to just constantly sit here and fire at this Gneisenau. Because the guys are still pushing up our left flank. And I have not forgotten about them. So that's the beauty of this map. This map is so small that you don't really have to go a far distance to be able to help a lot of people. Now we take another shot at the Gneisno. He gets finished off by the Parsifal's Flood, and we are going to start circling back to help the team. Now we've got a Jervis, and we have a Cruiser. Now this Cruiser really, really needs to kite at this point. Like, you should not be trying to take on a battleship inside 10 kilometers in a cruiser, unless, of course, you know that he doesn't overmatch you or something along those lines. But he also has a Mogami as backup. Now, the Mogami does not have the range to shoot me, so I am fully intending to engage this Richelieu and draw him out. I don't want these guys in our base. I've got, to, I've got to delay them and pull them away from the base and try everything in my power to do as much damage to them as possible. Now, these guys actually take some shots over the island. Again, these people don't normally make these kinds of uh, decisions. Those holes are there for a reason, and he took advantage of it. I got caught off guard. Again, doesn't happen very often on this map, because generally I'm the guy using those as, as uh, windows to shoot people. But... He also forgets that he's spotted this entire time, and uh, yeah, he's not going to be able to do anything about this. And we reach out and smash him. Over 10k again. Talk to me about how these guns are too small. <laughs> 16 of them, it doesn't matter how small they are. Now, I was contemplating switching to HE right away on this Richelieu, but he's given me enough of a broadside that I'm like, if I aim high, I might actually get a decent shot here. So, I take the shot and we actually get a decent shot 7900 damage i'll take it uh that's the first real damage he's he's sustained this entire time so we are going to start to get his undivided attention it's not going to happen right away because he realizes that he, he can get rid of the cruiser quickly uh i even though i only have 20 20 000 hit points he underestimates the the leon real badly 
and uh, we actually touch him again. Now that he's bow tanking me, I don't have much of a choice. I don't have much of a choice. He's bow tanking me. I'm not going to get much damage with the uh, the AP. So I switch to the high explosive again. There are times, and fighting a French battleship that's bow tanking you is probably a good time to switch. And uh, we reach out and touch him for over uh, 6,200 damage and set a fire. But he's going to damage con that fire, which is a really bad move. Damage conning a single fire is always, always a bad move unless you know you're not going to get set on fire again right away. When you've got 16 guns loaded with high explosive at 10 kilometers, guess what? You're probably going to get set on fire again. Just saying. But uh, he angles a little too much. We get another really good hit. Six penetrations on him. Only one shatter. And we get that fire. That is a perma fire. He's not going to be able to put that out. Now, he does overmatch me. I only have 25 millimeters of bow and stern armor, remember? So he overmatches me. So me going backside to him, probably not the best play. But at the same time, I'm narrowing my profile to try to minimize how many of those shots he actually manages to land. Now, that shot broke a lot of his AA, but didn't really give me anything in terms of damage and didn't set a fire, unfortunately. Uh, now, obviously here, we're trying to avoid the big island. I don't want to get stuck. Uh, and I still want to be able to get all of my guns to bear if I can. Now, obviously this guy's about to take uh, another shot at us and we don't really want to be too broadside, but at the same time, I don't want to crash into the island. So I don't really have a choice and he is going to catch us pretty good here uh, for a couple uh, overpins and a penetration. He, I think he ended up with about 4,000 damage there. And we only have 3,000 left. And then the freaking uh, Mogami hits us and gets a fire. Because that's how that works. Every time. But uh, we take a shot. Unfortunately, we don't get the dispersion that we want. And we don't get the RNG that we needed to set another permanent fire to finish him off. But... We did everything we could. I feel like we did it enough. And we pulled these guys. Look at their positioning on the map. They're going away from the cap, and our guy is in the cap. Which means we win. That's how that works. They still have an aircraft carrier defending their base, so I guess it's still up for grabs technically. But you can see Jervis here is firing his guns at the Richelieu. Uh, and I believe he ends up getting a fire here. But uh, Jervis is not long for this world. But that that fire right there probably ends up sealing the deal for the Richelieu. I say as he puts it out. And the Jervis dies. Unfortunate. But, again, we did everything that we needed to do. And that allows our team to win this match. Uh, the Parseval actually ends up finishing off the Richelieu. We've got a battleship coming back to defend the base or a.k.a. shoot at the Mogami eventually. Uh, but this guy actually, I don't know, he's got a really slow reaction time, this North Carolina. Uh, watch how long it takes him to get his guns to look at this guy once the guy starts shooting at him. Now, you know he's spotted this entire time, guaranteed. This Mogami is going to be spotting him pretty much for the entire time. And so he's spotted. He knows the last known position of the Mogami, and his guns are nowhere near where they should be pointed. And he's not really made up his decision on where, where his gun should be pointing. Because he's got his front gun straight over the bow. And he's got his rear gun turning to the left for some reason. Maybe he's hoping to get a shot at the uh, Parseval at 24 kilometers. But, but I highly doubt it. Anyway, long story short. Any moment now, the Mogami is going to get spotted on his right side. And there you go. Mogami fires his guns. You can see I'm out here looking. I didn't exactly see where they came from, but of course, the next time the Mogami fires, he's going to light up like a Christmas tree. There you go. And watch how long it takes him to decide to change his gun. He's, he's already been hit twice. Wait for it. Oh, there they go. There they started moving. <laughs> you got to love it, man. I don't know, man. Sometimes people are weird. I apologize for the flickering names, too. I don't know why that was doing that. It was just weird. I was trying to keep my... Uh, my cursor over the Mogami's health so that we could see how nasty this was. But then I just decided to follow it in and he, he turns in and actually makes him a, uh, hit high. Which is the best thing the Mogami could have done. 
uh, protects his his health and neither of these guys are going to get much out of this because the game's over our our team once again captures the base and wins so i hope this was a good showcase of the leone uh i th i had a bunch over 100k i probably averaged 90 maybe 87k damage today uh so pretty solid day in the leone second on the leaderboard 2000 base xp with a carrier of all things coming in top well done to the parsable so if you like what i'm doing punch the like button leave a comment below Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.